Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1958, Murder by Contract, starring Vince Edwards, Philip Pine, Herschel Bernardi, and Caprice Toriel. It's the story of a cold, ruthless contract killer for the mob who begins to have a few reservations when he finds out that his next contract is on a woman. Now, tonight's picture, uh, I want to point this out before we get into it, but it does have a very unusual musical score for a noir. As you're listening to it, it is guitar work. Uh, something that is clearly very experimental for noir. Um, but the picture is from 1958, toward the tail end of the noir era. And perhaps maybe they were looking to capitalize on the popularity of folk music and Latin guitar, which were very popular musical genres uh, here at the same time and were rising in ascendancy. So, uh, could be that they were hoping to catch in on a rising tide. Now, the guitar work in this, it was composed and played by Perry Botkin. Um, he uh, did all of the guitar work for this film, and he was also known for doing the guitar work in the TV series The Beverly Hillbillies. In fact, a lot of the musical score from this film was used on occasion in the TV series. And it's around the 13 to 14 minute mark in this film, you will hear a good you will hear a guitar stanza that was very commonly used in many episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies. Um, now, I say that this is you know, an unusual musical score for a noir. It is certainly not the big band and orchestral music that we hear in virtually every other noir. So yeah, tonight's picture was certainly experimental on that note. Uh, yeah, not the big band and orchestral music we're accustomed to, which does kind of beg the question, how did saxophone and jazz music ever become the stereotype that we associate with noir? <laughs> it's kind of a fair question, isn't it? So, from 1958, Murder by Contract. Let's roll the picture. Claude. So? I have an appointment with you. 
Who made it? Mr. Brink. Come in. Sit down. What do you want? A job. You'd like to work for me? Yes, sir. I'd like to work for you. Do you know what business I'm in? No, sir. Mr. Brink didn't tell you? No, sir. Did you ask him? No, sir. Why do you keep calling me, sir? I respect you. I'm a retired real estate broker. I don't do anything anymore. But I sit in my room, read, look at television, smoke cigars. I'd still like to work for you. Doing what? I want to be a contractor. Have you done it before? No, sir. You can only make a mistake once in this job. Well, I'm different. What do you mean, you're different? I don't make mistakes. And how come you're out of a job? I'm not. I've got a steady job. I make a nice income. Pension, fringe benefits. So? So I want to improve myself. I want to buy a certain house in the Ohio River. With my salary, it'd take about 23 years. I can't wait. I want to work for you. But Mr. Brink was kidding. I'm a retired real estate broker. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I appreciate your talking to me. You have a phone? Yes, sir. Write it down. I never put anything down on paper. Smart boy. And it was OP seven two four six eight. Seven two four six eight. I'll call you. Thank you. Maybe tomorrow, next week, or next month. If you're not in, I won't call back. Goodbye, sir. Passes the examination first. Let him sit home and sweat for two weeks. Yes, sir, this is Clark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll be there in ten minutes.
look relaxed. I feel relaxed. What have you been doing the past two weeks? Waiting for your call. How'd you know I'd call? You need me. Did you get restless? If I get restless, I exercise. My girl lives in Cleveland. Well, this is not Cleveland. I don't like pigs. I do. Human nature. Did you bring a gun? I don't have a gun. Knife? I don't even carry a room key. You're a smart boy. Your first contract. Thank you. You're not going to count it? It wouldn't pay you to cheat me. You're smart, smart. I'll call you, Claude. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I'll let you know the name and the address. Thank you very much. I thought I told you never to come here again, Claude. I know that, sir. You got your pay, didn't you? Same as always. You get paid whether you work or not. Why'd you come? Mr. Brinks sent me. For what? Yes, Mr. Brink. Yes, sir. Los Angeles? Oh, no, sir. I've never been there. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. on time anyway. Why did he fly out? Takes 10 hours instead of wasting three days on a train. You're nervous. Don't stay up so late. The trial is on the 18th. All we got is two weeks. All it takes is one little minute. That's all it takes in a gas chamber. Don't be so pessimistic. It's not your job. 
He's got to fill the contract, not us. We're just messenger boys. Federal trial. A guy's got to be crazy to fill a contract like that. You think the chief would send a crazy man 3,000 miles? Well, if he ain't crazy, he's greedy, and that's just as bad. Well, so he's greedy. So what? He's making five grand on the job. Five grand? I could really live on that. Yeah, but how long can a guy like that live? Boy, well, at last, it's pretty gorgeous. Mark, would you take a job like that? I mean, really, would you? Wouldn't you? Me? <laughs> no, I'm not that ambitious. Up. Not especially. I feel fine, just fine. You hungry? Had a fine breakfast on the train about an hour ago. Better get you back to the hotel. They got a lot to talk about. It's a shame to get cooped up in a room on a fine day like this. I'd like to drive around a bit, see the sights. i seen the sights. Well, I haven't. Look, man. Uh, we'd like to get this over with, you know. It's no picnic. My name's Claude. I'm George. He's Mark. Pleased to meet you, boys. Now that we've said hello, let's see how fast we can say goodbye. Listen, pal, we don't want to rush you, but we're anxious to get it done with. You know, the trial's on the 18th. Well, I don't do rush contracts. I may be on this an hour, a day, or a week. A week? I deal with the chief as I call the time. Whatever you say, Claude, whatever you say. Where do we go? I'd like to see the Pacific Ocean. Do you mind? You got your nice quiet room. I tell you, I don't like it. All these contractors are oddballs. They gotta be. Ah, this guy's weird. He don't even ask who the target is. Well, wait till he finds out. He won't be so relaxed. Tomorrow he wants to go deep sea fishing. So tomorrow we'll take him deep sea fishing. Claude, you don't want to really go deep sea fishing, do you? My pa always told me that when a guy's got something mighty important to do, he better take time to plan. And I can't think of any better way to plan than sitting behind a fishing pole. Sitting gives a man patience to think. There's too many doers in the world. Not enough people take time to think. He wants to go deep sea fishing. You filled many contracts, Claude. That's a silly question to ask me, Georgie boy. Now, if I told you, that'd be two of us at noon. That's two too many. I'd be a good boy and drive me back. Monday he went swimming. Tuesday he went fishing. Yesterday he went to the zoo. And not one word about the target. He ain't even asked who it is. I tell you, I don't like it, George. I don't like it at all. You're repeating yourself. 
I'm gonna tell him now. Well, good morning. Aren't you guys out in that fine, fresh air? What's the schedule today? The circus is in town. We could go down and feed peanuts to the elephants. Have you boys ever killed anybody? Well? I thought not. It's not easy, you know. Oh, you're reading the paper about some wife doing away with her husband. Child murderer. Knifing in a tavern brawl. These are crimes of passion. Crazy people off their rocker. Then there's a trigger-happy hoodlum. The kid that kills a gas station attendant because he can't open the cash register fast enough. That's another type crazy person. Both types eventually get caught. They don't plan. They can't. Even if they did, it'd be no use. The only type of killing that's safe is when a stranger kills a stranger. No motive. Nothing to link the victim to the executioner. Now, why would a stranger kill a stranger? Because somebody's willing to pay. It's business. Same as any other business. You murder the competition. Instead of price cutting, throat cutting. Same thing. There are a lot of people around that would like to see lots of other people die a fast death. Only they can't see to it themselves. They got conscience, religion, families. They're afraid of punishment here or hereafter. Me? <laughs> I can't be bothered by any of that nonsense. I look at it like a good business. The risk is high, but so is the profit. You're a real Superman, ain't you? Let him talk, Mark. I like when he talks. It's education. I wasn't born this way. I trained myself. I eliminate personal feeling. You're born like everybody else, flesh and blood. You gotta feel. I feel hot. I feel cold. I get sleepy and I get hungry. Today is the eighth. We got ten days. That's all. Ten days. Plenty of time. You want the money, don't you? Don't you want the money? I wouldn't do a good job. When you do a good job, the money comes. But when? When are you going to do it? You haven't even seen the target. I'll tell you when. Now both you guys get out of here. You're beginning to irritate me. How you bring all your orders? Isn't this what you ordered, sir? Take a look at that coffee cup. There's lipstick on that coffee cup. I don't like to drink coffee out of a cup some lousy pig left that trademark on. You call what? yourself a waiter? I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry. Sure, you're sorry. You're sorry you got to work for a living. You're sorry maybe you're alive altogether. If you're in a bind, don't bug me with it. Get out of it yourself. What's your name? Harry. Why are you scared, Harry? I'm not scared, sir. Wanna bet you are? You're too scared to add yourself up. That's why you're doing such a lousy job of bringing me a cup with lipstick to sweeten a coffee. Because mm -hmm. you're too far gone to care anymore. Why are you miserable? Because you haven't got any dough? And why haven't you got any dough? Because you're too scared to go out and get it yourself. You want it to come to you. Well, nothing comes to you, Harry. Nothing except one thing. Death. Death comes to you. Comes to everybody. Only everybody thinks they'll live forever. <laughs> There's a laugh. They think they'll live forever. The way I see it, Harry, everybody lives off everybody else. Who do you live off? Guys like me? Where would you be if it wasn't for guys like me? Out of a job? <laughs> Look at this. Dust over everything. Dust. Whose job is this? Somebody else's? Only it never gets done. Just like that coffee cup with lipstick. Full of lipstick, full of disease, and you get paid to carry it around. <coughs> Well, for my money, you can get me a clean cup. Now, go out of here and get it. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I'll sign a tab. Yes, sir. Here. This is for you. Five dollars for me? What you wanted? Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
You know, I'm beginning to like it out here. Sunshine every day. Reminds me of Miami. What were you in Miami? Was I in Miami? You just said it reminded you of Miami. You ought to be a lawyer. Oh, and you're driven around enough. Ah, uh, sure is nice. Hey, Claude, if we turn right at the next block, I can take you up Coldwater Canyon and show you the house. Whose house? The hits. You want to see the location, don't you? Sure, George, sure. Hey, you should have turned right there. Not today. It's too nice today. Can't be bothered with stuff like that. Sure is nice. He must be a genius in his own field. He's a genius and I'm dying. The guy's poison. Give me a light. Haven't got a light. What are we gonna do, George? If we can just call long distance. We can't call long distance. You know that. We're sitting on a real volcano. Could blow up any minute. He's out there driving golf balls. Like a drive a nail in his head. He doesn't even care. Real genius, like I said. We gotta be seen trailing around after him. Like we're on a vacation or something. He's finished at last. Cards? Yeah. Pinochle? What Pinochle? Casino. I'm going out. I'll be back in a couple of hours. You mind a little company? That's not in my contract. Everything is in your contract until you fill your contract. That's right, Claude. Okay, let's go to the movies. sitting right next to him. Why didn't you watch him? Suppose they pick him up. Who's gonna pick him up? He didn't do anything. It's our job to see he doesn't get out of our sight. Why didn't you keep an eye on him? He slipped out like a cat, just like a cat. We'll be a couple of dead cats if we don't but find let's him. get out of here and look for him. Where are you gonna look? I don't know, but let's go. We're not gonna find him sitting here. Where have you been? Watching you two guys. What do you mean? I waited outside the theater. I followed you everywhere you went. What for? I wanted to make sure you didn't have a tail on you. I know I'm clean. I know nobody followed me from the east. But I wasn't sure of you two. That's why you were stalling? Today is the 14th. I feel like a calendar. We got four days, that's all. Four days. Tomorrow you can show me the hit. What's the name of the target? Billy Williams. Lives in that little house halfway up the other hill. A 
A lot of men moving around down there. Fuzz. What? Fuzz. Cops. Detectives. Where you been all your life? You talk like a citizen. Well, you'll have to bear with me. I'm just learning the trade. Honest, Claude, you never served time before. Nope. Not even reform school? No. Well, what you been doing with yourself all your life? Studied. Built myself up. Went through high school. Commercial course. Today, I'm an expert comp tumut operator. You got a big career ahead of you? Yeah. 76, 20 a week before taxes. Billy Williams is there now. Can't see him. There's a woman standing in the way. Who's that, his wife? No, it's her. What? The target is a woman. Are you kidding? I thought you said Billy Williams. That's right, Claude. Billy Williams. She was a uh, piano part of a trio before she was sponsored by you-know-who. Where are you going? Look, I'm going to call New York, renegotiate this whole deal. What does he think I am, a sucker? Lord. Lord, I wouldn't do that if I was you. What did they tell me it was a woman? What did they tell me? Tell you? They don't have to tell you nothing. How are they supposed to know you was chicken? You're trying to make me mad, huh? So you're not going to succeed. I'm not scared and you know it. He's not chicken, Mark. He's not chicken. He's a good boy. He just doesn't like to damage a woman. It's not a matter of sex. It's a matter of money. If I didn't know it was a woman, I'd have asked double. I don't like women. They don't stand still. When they move, it's hard to figure out why or where for. They're not dependable. It's tough to kill somebody who's not dependable. I'll do it. But I want more money. I'm not authorized to pay you a penny more than expenses. Then I'll do what I said. I'll call the chief myself. Don't do that, Claude. Please no, don't. I wouldn't do that, Superman. Why not? He might not agree. Well, if he doesn't agree, the deal's off. The deal's off. The deal's off, you're dead. Come on, let's get going. I got lots to do. I'm drunk, don't you? Are you? Yes, I am. I'm drunk and I'm mad and I'm sore at my landlord and I'm sore at the world. You're handsome, gonna help me paint it. You're just gonna stand there and decorate the premises. Hey, your name, Joe? My name's Bartholomew, J.J. Bartholomew. I'm with the Federal Star Insurance Company. Funny, you look just like Joe. You cute, a little too cute if you know what I mean. But I don't need any insurance right today. Can't afford it. Got no job and I'm drunk and I'm mad. I could afford a magazine maybe. You got any magazines to sell or a vacuum cleaner? You could demonstrate a vacuum cleaner for me in the old time. Ah! You've got it the wrong way around. I'm going to pay you. Now wait a little minute. For some facts. Information. Huh? Information. Oh, information. I got lots of information. That's about all I got. You remember that what's-her-name starlet got caught with the wrong brand of cigarettes in the headlines about two years ago? Well, I used to work for her as a personal maid. One morning, I come into her boudoir, and you know what Miss she Miss Wiley. Had? Yeah, honey. I'm not interested in her. Who then, me? Billy Williams. Why? Well, my insurance company's got a policy issued to her, $100,000, so we'd like some information. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Please do. She's scared. Scared? Why? She's scared. She fired me two days ago without notice. Oh, she gave me a bonus. What hurts is she don't trust me. Wanted nothing but cops around her house. So what does she do all day? Nothing. That's impossible. Of course it is, but it's a fact. She's an expert at doing nothing. What does she do all morning? TV. 
turns it on the minute she wakes up like some people reach for a cigarette. And then what? Then nothing. Watches TV, does her eyes, reads the newspaper, and listens to TV at the same time. Now, there's a disgusting habit. What does she eat for lunch? Soup with matzo balls. The cops bring it by squad car, sirens screaming all the way from Beverly Hills. And then a chicken sandwich with the crust cut off. Me, I get to do that. Some privilege, huh? Anything else you could tell me about Billy Williams? What does she do all afternoon? TV, else piano, tickles on the piano. She used to be in show business. Pictures all over the walls, famous names with love to Billy. Love. Who gets love? Well, thank you. You've really been a great help. This is for your trouble. I told you. I don't understand that he's always on time. He goofed. You're Superman goofed. Remote control. How do you know she had remote control on a TV set? Not even any wires. He's supposed to know. He's Superman. I have come to the conclusion as follows. Superman ain't quite right in the head. Shh. Who's gonna hear me? You? I'm scared of him. He's unpredictable. I'm too mad to be scared. 
Three days. Three little days. Today's the 15th, tomorrow's the 16th, the day after is the 7th. come through. I've got faith in that brain of his. The trial starts the morning of the 18th. If Billy Williams ever gets to that witness stand... Don't even think about it. We should wire the chief. No. One single reason, why not? I don't trust Western Union. Then we'll call him direct. Get your head blown off direct. I'd be better off. I wouldn't have this worry. They sent a loony to do the job. It wasn't his fault. It was a good idea. A brilliant idea. High voltage electricity in a TV set. She turns on the set, boom. It's very clever. Clever? Very clever, I admit it. So clever, which it so happened it didn't work out. High voltage electricity kills it. It killed Joe Dutch in 40 seconds. Joe Dutch was strapped in a chair by the state of New York. Same idea. The idea was a bust. It wasn't his fault. Look, boy, you and me, we don't pretend to be supermen. Me, I don't even claim to be Mighty Mouse. But this, this is one job I could do all by myself. Huh? Far and make. You can't trace it. Shoot soft bullets. They spread when they hit. One shot kills. You are not the contractor. I'm willing to loan it to Claude, free of charge. You know he doesn't like guns. Who? Who likes guns? I don't like guns. Depends on which end you're talking about. He has told you several times he don't like guns. Superman! He can't stand the noise! Shut up! He might hear you. He's not even here, and you're scared of him? I guess I am. Which is it? Two loonies they sent me. How did you get in? Skeleton key. Very handy. Well, Superman? Look, Claude. I don't feel too bad. It was a great idea. I mean, uh, how was you to know remote control? They use it to eliminate commercials. It's unfair. Nobody knew, but I know it. Did you know it? You and me were meatheads. But he, he's Superman. Shut up. Tomorrow's a 16. I said shut up, please. 16 plus 2 equals 18. You've got 48 hours to finish the contract. 48 hours. How are you going to do it? Tell me how. Mark, leave him alone. Can't you see he's trying to work it out? Oh, I know that. He's got to. After all, he's got that little house on the Ohio River. He's got to get that out of escrow. Am I right, Superman? Leave him alone, will you, Mark? Let him talk. Keep on talking, Mark. Want a little advice? Will you listen? I got no brains, that I know. The one thing I got is an interest. If this job isn't finished to complete satisfaction, I got no future. No future whatsoever. So if this job was entrusted to me... Mark, stop it. Go ahead. What would you do? I would take a gun. I would shoot my way into that house and finish the job once and for all. Of course, that don't take brains. That just takes nerves and guts. Which I don't believe you got. You got no use for a gun? They're illegal. And I never use anything illegal. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I brush my teeth three times a day and I never drive above local speed limits. Funny. I thought I don't appreciate your thought, Mark. I do. I watched that house for five hours today, and things are bad, very, very bad. They've doubled, maybe tripled the guards around that place. He can't get within 500 yards without being searched and questioned, and I was searched and questioned. You? Fortunately, I don't carry a weapon. I'm just a tourist, a dumb citizen, as you say. And that's not the worst of it. That girl's scared. She's so scared she won't go in the garden. She just goes from the bed to the piano, from the piano to the bed. If I could only get it to come to the door for a period of three seconds. George, you're going to drive me to a toy shop. Huh? I hear right? Am I going bat? He said a toy shop. What? A toy shop. He's going to buy a cap pistol and bang, bang, scare her to death. I like you, George. You got a sense of humor. You're real clever. That's the first signs of intelligence.
hello again. Now, they certainly don't show his prior killings here, do they? Uh, back in these days, films were not overly graphic, so the killings were more or less implied. Like, you know, the time, you know, he killed the guy in the barber's chair, uh, and he killed the other guy at the hospital. You know, the killings were simply implied. Now, I got to tell you, that was one funny scene there uh, with the drunk lady uh, sitting there painting over the wallpaper. If you notice, that's what she was doing. She was painting over wallpaper. <laughs> that reminds me one time I was, uh, I had to redo some rooms in a house that uh, at the time we had bought recently. In that one, I found out the prior owners wallpapered over wallpaper. <laughs> and seeing that scene tonight, it just kind of reminded me of that. And for those of you wondering, uh, the scene there with the, with the wireless TV remote, those really did exist back then. Uh, of course, Claude, you know, the first time you know he's trying to kill her, he thought he would wire those high voltage electrical lines, you know, from those big power poles, you know, outside thought he would wire it uh, to the electricity coming into the house to her TV and figured he'd electrocute her at the TV knob. But uh, turns out she had a wireless remote instead. Yeah, those really existed. The one in this picture was a Zenith Space Commander 400 and they had actually introduced it in 1956, just a couple of years before this picture, and it worked on ultrasonic frequencies. But I do have to say, uh, you know, he, he's doing all these contract killings uh, to make big money fast so that he can buy a house along the Ohio River, which admittedly is certainly an admirable goal. Because now up in Dublin here, I'm well north of the Ohio River, but I've been down there many times and it is some beautiful scenery there along the river, you know, between Ohio and West Virginia and Kentucky. Gorgeous scenery. So I kind of see his point here. But there's another part of me wondering, you know, right here, just before we came to this, what could he possibly need with a toy shop. <laughs> I'm just dying to find this out. So let's get back to murder by contract. What do you think? I hold to my first opinion. He's fresh fried out of a nut factory. Maybe he's crazy, but what's the difference? He's still very clever. All right, now straighten your right arm. Get your left foot back about six inches behind your right at right angles. Now relax. Relax. You can't hit anything unless you relax. Look, Claude, uh, clear up something for my stupid head first. How are you going to hit her if she won't even come to the window? Look, will you relax now? You can't hit anything unless you relax. Let it fly. Go ahead. Pull back. Well, here. Try another. Let's see how you do here. Go ahead. That's a little better. Good, very good. Now I want you to go in there and take the steel tips off the arrows. I don't want to hurt anybody.
It's getting late. We can't do anything until tomorrow, and tomorrow's the 17th. Well, what's your plan? How can I plan with all that noise going on? What noise? Your mouth. Do you ever handle a gun, George? I ain't talking. How many men can a bullet kill? One. Maybe two if they're standing close together. How about a hand grenade? Five, six. Say a uh, high explosive shell, a three inch mortar. I don't know. I don't even want to know. Take a guess. No, maybe a dozen, if they're standing close together. How about a big Navy gun? Oh, say a six, eight, 11 inch. I don't know, but it's really gruesome. I saw that English picture once. How about an airplane bomb? 100,000. Hydrogen bomb? That's really murder. Maybe a million. Fall on Los Angeles, wipe out the whole smog. And what do they do to the guy that uh, throws a grenade, fires a mortar shell, aims a Navy gun, drops the airplane bomb, or presses a button that sends a missile 5,000 miles with a hydrogen warhead? What do they do to him? You're talking about soldiers. What, do they, uh, do they arrest him? No. Put him on trial? What for? Do they give him the gas chamber, electrocute him, or hang him? What? The soldier is doing his duty. And hey, what if he refuses? Well, quite, Marshal. They kill him for refusing to kill, right? Most logical, isn't it? And look at this place. Weapons for sale. A warehouse full of murder. And me, because I've got a business contract to kill one person, they label me a goon, a murderer. <laughs> Funny. Ironic, isn't it? I could go in there and pose as a purchasing agent for a film company. We have need for a genuine anti-tank gun with live ammunition. That's great, Claude. That's great. It's Claude. got a range of 2,000 yards. We can haul it up the hill on a trailer hitch, point it at the house, fire two or three rounds into the corner of the house where she lives. Wait a minute. Mark, come here. Mark! This boy's got it made. A real genius, like I said. Einstein's personal brain. All right, let's hear it. Go on, tell him, Claude. Mark, I want to get me a Smith & Smith hunting rifle with a tripod and telescopic sight. Well, wait a minute, Claude. You said we were going to get a genuine piece of artillery, an anti-tank gun on Caterpillar wheels. Well, unfortunately, to get that weapon, you have to have a license. And to have a license, you have to be a civilized country. Now, are you a civilized country? Me? I didn't even graduate third grade. All right, at least you're taking my advice. You're getting a gun now. How do you expect to hit the target if you can't get the target to come to the door? I'm going to let George take care of that for me. Aren't you, George? How? With your little bow and arrow. Now, you don't know me, but I saw your photo in the papers, and I wondered if you and I couldn't get together for a little oh, date. Sure, buddy. Where do you want me to pick you up? Who was it? Just a crank. Who are you? My name's Mayflower, James William Mayflower. I never saw you before. Well, I came on the night shift. You were sleeping then. How do I know you're telling me the truth? Well, I have my badge here. You can buy that badge in any drugstore. Lady, I resent your attitude. I had to take three examinations for the privilege of buying this. Now, you go back to sleep. I'm here to protect you. If I had wanted to kill you, I could have done it hours ago. I'm sorry, officer. It's just that I'm so scared sometimes. I can't breathe. They tried to kill me. Do you know that? Well, I heard about it. They uh, blew up your television set, didn't they? Yes. Look, lady, if you're so afraid, why don't you request they put you in custody? What do you mean by that? Central jail under lock and key. No! Why not? You'd be safe there. 
Why do you think I'm going through all of this? Why do you think I agreed to be a witness? I want to keep out of jail. Well, you go back to sleep. No one's going to hurt you. In 24 hours, the trial will start, and then it'll be all over. All your troubles, believe me. I believe you. I have to believe you. What else can I do? House full of men staring at me. Think they've never seen a woman before. Maybe they haven't. I want a woman in here. You fired my maid. You fired my cook. Two cops in the kitchen. The meals taste like glue. I want decent meals and I want some service. I'm going to take that stand, not you. It's my life I'm taking a chance on, not yours. Now, I want a woman in here. Do you hear me? A woman. Now, get on that phone. It won't do you no good. Call up. Please tell him what I said. Hey, honey. Listen, give me Central Division, will you, please? Uh, Sergeant? Uh, Sergeant, this is Mayflower. I'm over here on the Williams Beef. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Miss Williams has a complaint. She says she wants a woman in her room. I don't know, Sergeant. She says men are too... Uh, sex crazy, that's what. Tell them sex crazy. Sex crazy. Uh, Sa Sergeant! Listen, uh, she's been in here a long time. She's nervous, that's all it is. She says it's in a maid over right away. Let's hope I live to see her. Well, if you don't, I won't. It can't work. It can't. She'll never come to the door. You'll sit here forever. Maybe so, but I got one thing in my favor. I'll be surprised. What? The human female is descended from the monkey. And the monkey's about the most curious animal in the world. If anything goes on, it just can't stand it not to know about it. Same thing with a woman. Not this dame. She's too scared. Yeah, with well, the top of her head. But we're going to get her before she wakes up. So she acts automatically without thinking. Wakes up and rushes right to that door. And rushes right back. Great, Claude. All I need is one and a half seconds. Just enough time to squeeze the trigger. I'm going to zero in. You all set, George? Sure. Where do I aim? Over there into that brush, up in the hills. Wait a minute. Wait. There's fuzz all over that hill. They got shotguns every 50 yards. The more the better. Are you all set? How long do I wait? You don't. You go to work at exactly 8 a.m. Suppose he goofs. Well, then I just turned his gun around and put a bullet in his head. That I like. Some joke. I'm not joking. You mean it. You really mean it. You enjoy life, George? Times yes, times no. You like food, cigars, fat women? How do you know I favor fat women? Oh, I know about you, and I know about him. I know about people. I make a study of them. Psychology. I like you, George. Don't goof. It would really hurt my feelings. What time? Same as Mark. Exactly 8 a.m. Just light enough to see and early enough to wake her up for about 10 seconds.
My name's Wexley. Are you the new maid? Bunker Square. Shh, be careful. If she knows you're not a maid, she's gonna let out a scream. I've heard the sound of female screams quite a bit in my young life. It doesn't bother me anymore. What time have you got? 7.59, exactly. Listen, be nice to her, will you, even if it hurts? She's got to get up in that stand tomorrow. It's a nervous situation. Well, she's all yours. <coughs> to make sure. I don't like collecting money on false pretenses. <laughs> Where did you develop such a big conscience? I went to church regularly. I don't like your jokes, Superman. Well, George does. Don't you, George? I just spoke to Shingles. Wait a minute. You didn't tell him. I don't have to tell him nothing. He runs over the mouth. Well, come on, come on. What did he say? He was told by a nurse who works at the Georgia Street Receiving Hospital who got it from a cop who was there. What? Well, what did he say? When they wheeled out her body, it was covered with a sheet. Maybe she was just wounded. Covered with a sheet, face and all. Now, you see, Superman? A gun does a job. A gun works. And <laughs> you didn't want to use a gun. You were afraid. Hey, get your house out of escrow now. What's the matter? You unhappy? I should have stayed. I should have stayed and checked the whole thing myself. Look, Claude, I know Shingles. He's a liar. But he wouldn't lie to me. A cop tells a nurse. A nurse tells Shingles. Shingles tells you. An awful lot of the facts can get lost in a chain like that. Suppose he didn't hit the target. Don't even think about a thing like that. Billy Williams, former jazz pianist and reputed ex-girlfriend of Big Smiley, now under indictment for income tax fraud, was shot to death early today in her home. That's enough. George, get those papers back. Some poor citizen's looking for them. As long as you're up, eh? I don't believe it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Get me a train ticket, will you? Oh, there's plenty of time. Next train goes at 10 o'clock. Well, that's five hours from now. What do I do for the next five hours? Relax, man. How does a guy find relaxation in this lousy town? I can't believe it. I tell you, I just can't believe it, that's all. What are you yapping about? It's hard for me to believe you turned out to be human. Well, don't be too sure. In Woman Gross, Fiber and McGuire, Mr. McGuire's office. Good afternoon. Yes, Mrs. Clark. Can do. I'll make a note of it. Oh, Shirley. Shirley. Oh? But, Mrs. Clark, I wear indelible. Well, I'll try. 
I'll, I'll do it for you. Wipe your feet and come in. Hello. Hello. It's little me. Were you raised in a barn? Close the door. My name's Mary. Oh, give me your life history, honey. It'll break my heart. <laughs> oh, I never discuss my personal affairs. You will. Women always do. Well, don't you like me? What's it like? I like you, yeah. Satisfied? No, you don't. Your tone is not sincere. You're disappointed. I'm truly sorry. And I so wanted you to have a good opinion of me. I have no opinions whatsoever, but you can check in a half hour. I like people to like me. Why don't you? Well, I'll tell you why. First place, take that lipstick off your mouth. Well, I have. I mean, I try. Look, nothing comes off, you see? And in the second place, you're two hours late. Have to catch a train at 10.30. Well, I work in the five. Had to go home and change. And I had a previous appointment. I had to bring a birthday present to my mother's uncle. I don't care to hear about it. Where are we going for dinner? Any place you like, as long as it's quick. You're not the politest person in the world. Okay. I'll be polite. Have a drink. Drink? Where? Free of charge. Guess a person can always use a drink. You got a clean glass? I like this hotel. Nice. Very sanitary. <laughs> and all that. <clears throat> you don't mind? Well, just hurry up. Don't get the wrong impression. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm just nervous. <laughs> all day long. Ever since what happened this morning. There's been fuzz all over town. Why? What happened? Well, don't you read the local newspaper? Oh, you mean about the uh, girl, the uh, girl uh, piano player? Yeah. Awful. She was the girlfriend of one of the real biggies. Is that so? Mm. Oh, what a narrow escape. <laughs> Makes me shudder. You don't call being shot and killed instantly a narrow escape, do you? And that's just what they give out to the papers. To avoid further trouble. Well, Billy Williams wasn't hurt. Just hysterical. And I don't blame her one little bit. They carried her out under a sheet. I saw it on the front page. And that was a policewoman. She made the mistake of trying on Billy's negligee right in front of Billy's door. <laughs> now, isn't that a howl? And you know, when a member of the force gets killed, well, they just go crazy. I mean, when they go all out, and, and then everybody's in trouble. They'll arrest a person for just looking the wrong way. How do you know? They just do, that's all. Well, they go crazy when one of their own cops gets killed. I mean, how do you know the story in the paper was false? I happen to know. Look, you make a statement, but you don't care to prove it. Now, you made it up, didn't you? It's a lie. What difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. Why? Look, I don't mean to get sore. I... I'm just curious, that's all. Have a drink. Well, my mother's uncle, uh, the one that had the birthday, he's on the DA's staff, high up, very high up. <laughs> oh, nice, sweet old man. We see a lot of him. He told me. He said it like this, he said, and I quote, Billy Williams is shot dead. True. But she is nevertheless going to appear very much alive on the morning of the 18th at 10 a.m. exactly. And that's what the man said. And you implied I was a liar. 
Miss, I'd, I'd like you to go home now. But what about dinner? I have to make a 10.30 train, please. Oh. All right, if I'm not wanted. No, I won't go. It's insulting. Get out! Here's your cab fare. But why? I want to know why. I'm not in the mood. Now go on home like a good little girl. All right. I'll go. But I won't be pushed. Oh, everybody pushes me around. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Look, I got nothing against you personally. It's just I developed a little headache and I've got to catch a train. <laughs> Look, don't be so emotional. It doesn't pay. You've got to look at life. Dollars and cents. Cold, objective, facts. By which I mean face facts, little girl. Business is business. You've been paid, so come on, go home. You know, you're attractive. Oh, I don't say that to everyone. Please don't think I'm the kind of girl that says that to everyone. I don't. Oh, I know. Lipstick. I'll leave you my office phone, and, and next time you're in town, you call me. All right, I'll do that. Now, remember, you promised. I won't forget, sweetheart. You call me. Bye-bye. Hey, you're up early. Where are you going, Claude? Home. You're upset. Naturally, we're all upset. But you can't leave now. It's not fair to us. I tried. I tried twice. I don't mind telling you, Claude. You disappoint me. It can't be done. The contract's a jinx. Jinx? If you don't complete this job, you're the one who's jinxed. And we're jinxed right along with you. You can't force me to work against the jinx. If I do, I'm dead. Who's going to force you? But if you don't fulfill your part of the contract, we're going... What were you saying, George? <laughs> nothing. He wasn't saying nothing. He's disappointed, that's all. Well, what do you mean? Like you said, I'm disappointed. Sure, because Claude's right, George. You can't work against the jinx. Hey, what time's your train leave? Well, I could get the 742. It's a coach. Well, you don't have much time. We'll drive you down to Union Station. No, don't bother. I'll take a cab. No, no, we'll drive you. We wouldn't want the chief to think that we goofed on our job. Come on, George. Get his bag. station. Chief's going to be pretty sore. He's already sore. Well, how do you know? We spoke to him. How? Oh. On the phone. Well, what'd he say? He said to get rid. Of me? Of you. Unless you change your mind and finish the job. What? He didn't say. I say. Let him finish the job. No. No chance. Look, Claude. I... Look, I won't work against the jinx, and that's it. All right, it's settled. Come on, we'll show to your room. What is this place? It's a movie studio. Not much business.
Superman. Get up, Superman. Oh, oh. Guns are bad luck, Mark. You better take this with you. Where you're going, kid, you'll need it. George! George! I'm your pal, George! I need you, we'll do it together! We'll finish this contract, George, you and me! Tell Mr. Brink to get back from Europe. Tell him to call me right back. If he doesn't, I'll fill my contract with him. Would you give your number, sir, please? Beechwood 7, 4400, room 505. This is Claude. I said this is Claude. What do you want? Why don't you tell me it was a woman? So what? Well, a woman will cost you more money. Ten grand. Wire me ten grand, Kara Western Union. Ten grand? That's right. One followed by four zeros. I'll send the care of the boys. The boys are dead. to do the landscaping on it. Oh? Any questions? I'd be glad to assist. Yeah, what are these squares outside the house here? Drains. Holes with steel grating. What are they for? Drainage. Rainwater. Doesn't rain much in Los Angeles, but when it does, boy, watch out. You from out of town? Yeah. Me, I'm native born, like the gophers. <laughs> Joke. Uh, what are these parallel lines here? Mm, nothing to worry about. They belong to the county. Culvert, big pipe to carry off the water. How big? Mm, two feet. About big enough for a man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bet. Pay the cash here on your way out.
are you? I'm the relief officer. I'm new. Never seen you before. Does music bug you like it does all the other cops? If you want to play, play. Walking around, you're making me nervous. If I sit, I get nervous. How long is that piece? You'll see when I finish it. Why do you want to testify against Brink? That's a funny question for a cop to ask. Even a cop would hesitate to do what you're doing. It's Brink or me. Once he's gone, I'll be safe. before you get out of here. That's a relief. Give me a break and I'll give you one. Get out of here and I won't scream. chance. Come on out. We'll give you a break. Welcome back. <laughs> this is a take bona fide arrows at a toy shop. I mean, I just you wouldn't see that today. I mean, you go to a toy shop today, and if you see arrows, you know they're going to be the foam tipped or or the suction cups. I mean, they're not going to have steel tips like this one did. And then the other scene there too, uh, where he was in the sporting goods shop and he was looking at the machine gun. Yes, uh, that is legal because if you noticed when he was pointing at the breech, the firing pin was removed. You can own a machine gun if it is rendered inoperable, such as removing the firing pin. But that scene at the restaurant there, uh, if you noticed, you could visibly see there on the table uh, the beer they were drinking. It was Pabst Blue Ribbon. 
and the label of it was pointed right at the camera. <laughs> I, mean, I just wonder, were they doing product placement in films even back then? Now, you who have been following me for some time, uh, you know I always have a bottle of whiskey here on the table, like right now. Okay, tonight's whiskey, Connemara Peated Single Malt, uh, an Irish whiskey, uh, one I strongly recommend, but it is a peated whiskey, so it has a very smoky peat aroma to it. I mean, I can get this glass to about here, and I can already smell it. Uh, you know, it's, and believe me, uh, it, 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 it's, it's almost like drinking a campfire. You know, th that's how I tell it to people. And on a cold winter night up here in the snow belt, it's absolutely perfect. Now, Vince Edwards, uh, who's playing the role of Claude here, he's the killer. Um, he was even here at Ohio State University for some time, uh, for a couple years. You know, OSU is just down the road that way. Uh, he was here for a couple of years uh, on an athletic scholarship. He was on their swim team and was even with the team at a time that they won the U.S. National Championship. But after a couple years, he transferred to the University of Hawaii uh, and was on their swim team there too. And his motive in doing that was to train for the Olympics uh, as a swimmer. So Vince Edwards, uh, certainly an athletic guy and obviously a very accomplished swimmer. But after those two college, oh, and while he was at those two colleges, he was involved in drama productions while he was in school there. But then he transferred, uh, went to school at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. That's where he really, you know, honed his craft, at least academically, and went on to his film career from there. Now, he starred in many pictures, many genres, but his noirs included The Killing, Rogue Cop, Hit and Run, The Night Holds Terror, and, you know, just the list goes on. Um, but he really achieved major stardom when he appeared in the TV series Ben Casey, and he was in its title role from 1961 to 1966. So that, that was really when he really made major stardom, which on the other end of the scale brings us to Caprice Toriel. She was the one playing Billy Williams in tonight's picture. For Caprice, this picture was her first and only credited film. So very much a one-hit wonder for her with this one. Now remember, if you like tonight's picture, you want to see more like it, click on the subscribe button down here. You'll be notified of you know future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar and you can find all of the prior releases. And, as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.